Hey, what is up, everyone? It's Rich. All right, welcome to Super Fun Sunday. Thank you, Malware Bites. Perfect timing. Speaking of timing, this was very, very crazy. So, look, I, I didn't want to go live today. I didn't have enough time to really prepare for today. And normally, I'd be going live in 15 minutes. And, I mean, it took me everything I had just to get this together. And, I mean, it would have been very, very difficult for me to go live. But Kelsey and I are going to go live this week. So, Kelsey is out of town. I think he gets back home tomorrow. And then we, we tentatively were planning on doing a live show on Wednesday. So uh, we are definitely doing a live show at some point this week. It'll probably be earlier in the day. Uh, my thing is, is, is hopefully it hits a few different time zones where, you know, the most people possible can enjoy it live. Because uh, I think that that is fun. But anyway, so this will be a classic one. I'm going to do Alex Ross. I'm going to actually explain why I think sometimes people gloss over Alex Ross far too easily and just write him off as like, uh, he's really good, but he's a painter, and he uses reference and all this stuff. But I really think just as a fan, his stuff is excellent to just enjoy. Um, I always, I never, ever regret actually doing any kind of deep dive on Alex's work. What's great about his his comic art to me also is the fact that although um, you know he does use models and stuff like that to, to nail down his things, he's actually really, really good at taking like classic, like John Buscema, Jack Kirby, all the sort of classic... Jim Lee even, um, he takes those poses and kind of does them in his way in his books and stuff like that. And I've always found it a very, very good source of almost like someone who's done the work for you. I've never really cross-referenced this stuff, but, but I kind of feel like, um, you know, like, especially if you're trying to learn, he's actually really, really good to look at for lighting on things. Cause you know that he's actually sourced it from pretty authentic things. So really most of the information that you're getting from him is is fairly pure i mean it's done through his filter uh i mean i've really had the good fortune of seeing a lot of his originals in person um at wildstorm he did astro city covers so he would actually send in original paintings and i'll talk a little bit about that and and uh, how impressive they were to see in person but this should actually be re really fun oh my the weird coincidence was literally i was opening the files for this and i was just kind of trying to kill a second while everything was opening and comic-con online not even three minutes ago uploaded uh, a 40 minute interview with alex ross so that was really trippy to see um it's like very odd timing but yeah so let's get into this what's super fun sunny it's super fun and uh this is gonna be kick-ass so first things first i wanted to Oh, I was going to do Jodorowsky's Doom. All right, hold on one sec here. Let me shut this. That. Um, yeah, this. So I wanted to thank everyone that did Super Chats last week. It was difficult because I was doing it on my own, but what I thought I would do is I just wanted to hit him. So Seven, Steven, obviously thank you very much. Um, I appreciate the birthday wish. wish. We've got Comic Book Creation Live. Wish me happy birthday. Thank you very much. Chris. Thank you so much. I know I read your comment, but I didn't really thank you directly. I was I was really trying to um, follow the chat at that second. And when I watched it back, I was like, man, you just glossed right over that. So it wasn't intentional, obviously. I'm sure that you know that. You know, Obviously, I'm just appreciative of people in general watching my channel. And the super chat is very, very kind and generous. So, And then also Sheldon. And then we've got some other people that have super chatted on um, the Sarah Frazetta video. We, obviously, Kelsey and I both appreciate all of those super chats and um you know even as we go further back you can see more so anyway all right so let's get to the alex ross um art and uh, just have some fun really like checking out uh his work because it's it is very very cool and um let me bridge open i can shut that i was gonna try to open everything in bridge and uh it just wasn't uh, is effective so a really nice superman i mean you know i think he does a great iconic superman there's a lot of different versions of superman out there but this works for me um he's he's big his neck is gigantic his shoulder blades i mean the guy is huge and it's a nice cover it's dramatically lit but yet he didn't really put a lot of heavy shadows on on um superman's face so we'll keep an eye on that and see how much actual dark shadows that he uses on faces there's a little bit here in the nose um but but uh i think it's an interesting thing i i've 
considered seriously with my own work how to use black in terms of like rendering on faces and line work and stuff like that and it really ends up ultimately being a pretty personal choice and you'll experiment with it as you go along and what you'll find is just some stuff looks like what you were going for and some doesn't i was going to do jodorowsky's dune but it was going to be way too complicated to try to do today so anyway here's a beautiful beautiful spread here so he's got superman and shadow here this is actually pretty nice and in, in fact you can actually see a bit more of his underdrawing so this almost to me looks like a study um this clearly is not a finished piece in in alex ross land um and uh, we've got some sketches. So Alex has been drawing since he's a kid. He occasionally will bust out little drawings that he's done as a youth. These don't really look like kid kid drawings, but maybe they are. Um, but uh, yeah, the one thing that I noticed with his uh, original painting, seeing many of them in person, is his execution is flawless. It is so impressive to see one of his originals, and it really. If you've ever seen really good art where it almost looks like you, it wasn't drawn, that's kind of what it looks like. It's very weird. Like when you look at the original, you're like, I don't really see any like like how did he get the paint so smooth? Why is there like it's it's really nuts. But I've seen many artists that that work that way where where um you know you look at it and you just go, wow, I I don't really understand how he applied everything so so expertly. This is interesting. The nice thing with Alex, too, is he really does have seem to have an affinity for any character that he draws, so be it Marvel, DC, or any other odd jobs that he gets. He generally does does his due diligence and uh, will go in and actually make it look really good. If my mouse keeps doing that, I'll start using my stylus. In fact, I'll switch now because that bugs the shit out of me. Okay, so now seeing this, I haven't, I haven't looked at Alex's work in a while. These shadows on the face, I actually remember, and this is kind of what I was talking about, though, is like... If you're interested in lighting, Alex actually is a really, really good guy to look at because the thing is, is he's done the homework for you and you can kind of go in and sort of look at how he, how he lights things and know that at some point he probably had someone, you know, with lamps around him and, you know, like it's a nice reference source that you can use at your discretion you know it's not copying one for one but you know if you're like man i don't know how to really like dramatically light you know a uh, male's face stuff like this can actually come in handy how much does he show the teeth the nostrils is the tongue showing whatever it is these are nice yeah very very dramatic lighting he did, he did a book with, I want to say, Doug Wheatley. I might be wrong with who penciled it. Someone, he did a book for DC. I've actually done um, a video on it. It's just been long enough where I can't remember who the penciler was. Um, and, uh, man, it was great. There's probably some pieces in here, but it was really interesting. But he basically painted over a comic book penciler. I thought it was really good. I remember when they were coming out, like, saving them. And although I wasn't really in um, a painter's place at that point... I knew that they were damn good and the this other person sort of doing the layouts was even more interesting to see combined with alex's monster uh, painting chops but uh you know he does great hands it's just all really nice very dynamic figures they're always really solid that's nice was interesting because Kelsey and I have been talking about, um, you know, I'm thinking it doesn't really matter what order we go through these images. So we can just, we'll just go full, full, full screen and look at it. But yeah, Kelsey and I were talking about painted comics and, and I didn't really know Kelsey's thoughts on Alex Ross and he seemed very, um, into it. Like, like seemed like he was a fan and really appreciated it. He's, it's weird. Cause I, I know any time that you bring him up, there's there's a small group of people that are like, ah, uh, you know, again, the sort of the de the things that could potentially detract on it, the photo reference or, or, you know, maybe you're just not a fan of painted work, whatever it is. But uh, this looks like a little model. So to go...
I would I would really be interested in seeing him do um, a lot of different books. I mean, it would be, you know, Wildstorm fans, but I mean, you know, like imagine him painting like a death blow story. It would never happen, but I mean, Wildcats, uh, The Authority. I mean, there's all kinds of things that, that uh, would have been really interesting to see him sort of take a stab at. His prints are even really expensive. It's funny because at Comic Con, when uh, I would go by his um, booth, he has a booth, a big one. It looks very expensive and it's very, you know, set up really, really beautifully. And uh, man, there's just nothing cheap. <laughs> but again, really, really nice lighting. This is real solid. It's very, very simple. I mean, the Superman figure in particular. It's almost all black. He kept the hand, you know, the hand on this uh, little Superman's left arm. But even stuff like this, I'm telling you, uh, you know, a go-to pose guy for me when I was first learning to draw, and someone that I thought had a really solid, consistent look was Carlos Pacheco. Um, in particular, he did um, some stuff for Marvel. Uh, it was Universe X. He did Bishop. There were some X-Men issues. He did some Wolverine. And then he did... Um, Avengers Forever. Avengers Forever, in my opinion, has almost like every comic book pose. It's 12 issues, but it's like, Ross is like that too, where it's like, if you need a pose, there's a very high likelihood that at some point Alex has done it and done it really, really well. And so again, it's, a, it's an incredible source of um, inspiration you can get from someone like this. Dude just done his homework. Oh yeah, these are cool. I, I actually really like how his pencil drawings. And in a weird way, seeing him now, I actually am getting like a tiny bit of a Toth vibe, which I would have never, ever have noticed before. Or maybe Steve Root or something like that. But uh, yeah, it's funny. So time is always, it's, it's very interesting to continue to learn about art and then continue to go back looking at art and stuff that, that you may have had one opinion on, you know, five or 10 years ago, and then you see it with fresh eyes and you've, you've become more knowledgeable and, uh, all these different things start to connect. And I mean, and it could all be coincidental. Man, that's awesome. <laughs> this looks like the ELO album cover uh, with just different colors. This bottom uh, thing right here. It's funny. This is really, really badass. But he does make this stuff actually, I think, very exciting and, and very epic. And, and DC has been smart and reprinted or collected a lot of his stuff in quite large volumes. Um, you can get those Marvel Treasury sets. I have them actually in my office right now. Um, but it's like a Batman book, a Superman book, a Shazam book, a Wonder Woman book. Um, and then I think that they did like a collection of them, but they're real big, but I mean, it's a nice way to enjoy Alex's art. He works quite large. So, and again, just really, really good lighting. I mean, you, you could definitely see where maybe like someone like Brian Hitch, uh, you know, I know like even Lee Bermejo when he was, he was refining his stuff adam hughes alex ross i mean you know you you look at this guy because he really is that good um i mean even like the lighting on um this this right here uh, on the kneecap area i mean it's a little bit like how kevin nolan would appro uh, approach um that sort of double lighting where you've got um you've got lighting oh You've got lighting coming from this side and this side, and so you get that core shadow going. But, you know, if you don't want to hire a model, just pull out some of your Alex Ross comics, and, th and this stuff, too, is just great. So, yeah, it's been a while. I I, I should have remembered that he did all this dramatic lighting. Cause, uh, but, I, honestly, probably the last time that I really looked at his stuff was, was doing... Maybe it's Dale Eaglesheim. So I keep trying to remember who penciled that other... Uh, thing again i'm i'm nearly sure that there'll probably be some some pieces in here this is great so this is alex's dad from what i remember and i think he's in um marvels possibly kingdom come i think he's in the uncle sam book this is nice too yes good good stuff this looks a little like clint eastwood 
beefier head, but mm. and this is interesting because you don't really see his mustache that much in that version of it. And here, or the I guess it's a Van Dyke, but uh, yeah, in the pencils, it's almost not noticeable. You could almost think it's like wrinkles or something and uh, skin. <clears throat> okay. Oh man, these are good. God dang. <laughs> it's kind of funny. So uh, a while back, like I had a friend that's a comic book dealer and I, I had this wild hair up my ass and I was like, you know what I should do? I should bank a bunch of blank sketch covers. So I, I just gave him a wish list and I said, like, get me 10, you know, 10, what the fuck is going on? That is really weird. Oh, okay, never mind. I see what it is. Uh, but like 10 of the Max, 10, you know, Superman, 10 Star Wars blank covers. And so I bought a couple hundred blank sketch covers that I was like, you know, when I when I get my penciling up and running, you know, maybe I can knock one out a week or something for fun or whatever. But I ended up getting a huge batch of Action Comics 1000, something like that. But I, I'm not, like, I don't really consider myself a huge Superman fan, so I have all these Superman blank sketch covers that I'm going to fill. But when I see Alex Ross's Superman, I actually do kind of go like, you know what, I, I like this archetype of him better than some of the other ones. And these are all really, really cool little pencil sketches. I have some ideas for those sketchbook covers now that I didn't have before, but I don't want to spoil it right now. But uh, I figured out a way to use them and uh, have a lot of fun doing it, so... These are great, man. I would I would kill to have sketchbooks filled with little drawings like this. Mine are just slop. <laughs> but improving slop. But yeah, these are nice little drawings. Again, I, it, it doesn't really look like Toth, but I definitely, like, there's that, uh, I don't know, like Toth, Steve Rude kind of thing going on. They're just really good artists is really what it boils down to. Oh, yeah. It's funny because seeing this now, it makes me think of the Ryan Benjamin Travis piece too, because they did like a little um, Wildstorm kind of version of this uh, piece. It was it was nice, you know? Ryan did the pencils, and then Travis kind of did finishes over it, and uh, I think Ryan sold it, which was a big mistake. You know, hold on to that stuff, let it uh, increase in value. But who knows? Maybe he, maybe I'm wrong, and he still owns it. But uh, yeah, I wouldn't have let that go so soon. You want to wait like thirty years. <laughs> <laughs> 30 equals because <laughs> if you look at like uh john bernard or you know i mean some stuff takes it longer it depends on how old you are when you start to save the stuff but uh if you're in your 20s you look at it look at it like a bit like a 401k <laughs> dude alex is so good man I always find it incredible too that like he does such a beautiful like pencil drawing and then he paints over it like i'd be terrified that i was just going to ruin my my lovely uh pencil drawing with you know poor application of paint obviously it's not a concern for him but so this is is this shazam or i guess it's superman kingdom comes superman he's a bit older this stuff is really cool too yeah i hope that you're enjoying this if you're one of those people, it's like, ah, Alex Ross, he's overhyped. And then you see stuff like this and you go, damn, it's pretty, pretty good, man. I don't know. I, I referenced this uh, not too long ago, but in the Rush documentary, Billy Corgan is talking about Rush, the rock band Rush. And he goes, some bands are over-explained. Led Zeppelin, the Beatles, like everybody knows. I feel like Alex suffers from that. He's so great people just it hurts it, it causes issues <laughs> i remember showing this stuff uh to my grandfather when i was first getting into comics to a, like a little like not really validate it but i was like you know you can you can paint like norman rockwell and do comics i thought that was pretty impressive i mean at the time i had my stepmom buy extra copies of uh, marvels and kingdom come because i thought that they might be worth something one day so I really felt like he was a pretty special artist. The print runs are too high on those books to really be, like, nuts. But uh, regardless, they're still very, very kick-ass, great comics. 
This is really good too. Ah, more of these really nice sketches. Dang. I love the sleeve on this. It's really nice. Yeah, it's great. Yep. What's this funny? I felt like we saw a bigger version of that. It's sometimes it's hard to remember when I'm shooting the videos when we go back. Oh, this is really cool. See, he oh man. I know he man and masters of the universe is on everybody's uh, social media right now. I don't really know the whole story behind what's going on, but Alex Ross would would paint some pretty badass uh, he man characters too. Uh, uh, that would be very very cool to see. Man, these little drawings are great. <laughs> Batman, it's it's funny because he looks small, but it's because I think his head is so big. So his body is quite big, but uh, yeah, his, his head is pretty large, so it makes him look almost like he's like 5'8 here, which I, I mean, Batman could be. Even this feels a little small. Wow, really solid just like quick sketch of a hand though it's good really nice oh man look at this I actually really like this look these the gray scale ones where they're not painted in color I actually do think look quite nice man that green arrow is great damn This is really cool, too. I mean, I can't imagine that Travis wasn't a little influenced by this stuff. I mean, I don't... It's not like I don't really look at Travis's stuff and see Alex Ross in it. But but you figure if he's percolating this idea that he's going to do this X-Men Wildcats Golden Age book and he's going to use washes and stuff like this, there's no way that he glossed over this because there wasn't a ton of people really doing washy uh, grayscale stuff in comics at that point um and uh you know it, it makes a little bit of sense like like he was getting more and more rendery with actual like the line work but you know you use that line work and then some of these concepts combined with it you're gonna have a really really like people will respond for sure they like artistry and and what they consider you know and it's a sliding scale depending on their knowledge base but you know people enjoy detail they like stuff that looks like it took time you know there's something that they appreciate appreciate about that and then it's interesting because i have two trains of thoughts on this because i actually like really direct art but but i almost in some ways kind of think that that artists earn the ability to simplify their work meaning that that like i think if you break in and you're looking at someone who's spent 30 years drawing and they've started to sort of boil their stuff down into a more direct thing you know some fans may not care for it but uh yeah it's interesting an in interesting thing but if you start and like you come out of the gate kind of trying to draw like mignola or something along those lines it's like i don't know if people respond to it the same way as watching mignola have have evolved into it so this is really good and again he's just crushing it with the planes on the face i mean you know all these black shadows and stuff like that are all really really beautifully placed it's really nice oh this is good this is is it fantastic four number one it's it's kind of like the fantastic four number one cover just to like maybe a reimagining am i tripping on that Either way, it's actually really cool. Yeah, I, I think it is. I don't know what comic this is for, honestly, off the top of my head. They're trippy characters. Oh, maybe this is Astro City. Yeah, this could be Astro City. I don't know why, but this this guy's costume is actually pretty cool. I, I kind of like that. It's weird because it's like Carnage, Black Panther, and Spawn. <laughs> With a little bit of like a maybe like medieval spawn. She's cool too.
it's tough if you're coming up with new characters to get fans on board for them. I see it with um, other people posting it and, and also even with my own experiences with it is like you really kind of just you have to just own it and then just keep you know share your excitement for the characters that you're creating really get your fans familiar with them you know hey like this guy's name is toby and he's the the, the specter whatever you know what i mean and it, it's like you really want to fill in all the blanks for them so that they are just completely locked in to what it is you're up to and, and i and honestly i mean i'm not i wouldn't name books but i've seen people that are out there promoting creator own books um, and they never really talk about the characters of the story, you know, they have promo art and, and, uh, you know, that's, that's kind of the, the end of it. You want to make sure that your fans really understand all the ins and outs of what's going on. Especially now, I think mass is great. Again, it's interesting. He does draw, he draws pretty big heads on these. This guy feels big though to me. This is great. I always thought this was a very very cool version of a Clark aging. Tough shot, up shot. That'll get you sometimes, depending. I always find this area a little funky, and then sometimes what to do in here on an upshot i tend to pull this up too much i think so i'll work it out i'm dialing it in i can feel it like i was i was gonna sit yesterday i had like a half hour to kill and i was gonna work on upshots this is interesting gosh and this is interesting i mean you can see when when he draws on his own just out of his head it's a little softer I don't know how now this might have been when he was younger. This looks like it, yeah. It's still solid though. Nineteen eighty seven, okay, yeah. So um he did do a couple of books before um Marvels. I, I wanna say he did Terminator two comic? Something like that. I have one of them. Not 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 that, but some there was something else that he did. This is nice. And then we've got the Kingdom Come uh, back cover. I guess this is from issue one. Ah, it's really nice. Solid. Looks like he uses fairly soft lead. I've been trying to find a balance of, of a nice soft lead that's easy on my hand and um, something that doesn't smear too much because it's the only problem is you start using like a three be lead or something like that one you have to have a real gentle touch so even when you're going in and putting like your loose sketch and stuff like that you don't want to bear down too hard um and, and then you're going to refine it with this like softer lead but yeah it can get a little smeary so and and honestly some graphite actually doesn't take ink very well over it so you have to kind of uh, experiment with that too wow this is nuts god i don't even know how freaking long something like this would take holy shoes Wow, that is insane. The test to see how hardcore of a fan you are is how many of these characters <laughs> could you could you name? I'm like, uh one, two, maybe? I don't know. Up here I'm better. <laughs> This is nice. Oh, that's really cool. I like how he uh, lit her leg. It's actually very nice. But, you know, here's here's a lot of different figures at a lot of different angles and stuff like that. And, again, you know, you could use this as a source of inspiration for, for maybe a pose that you need to do. You know, you've got someone flying. You might go, oh, I never really thought of putting, like, his torso there and his ass there or whatever it is. You know, and here's another one. Um, he really, really does cover a tremendous amount of real estate with what he's up to and done. They look like they're dancing. <laughs> ah!
Oh, this is cool. Yeah, that's really neat. Crisis on Infinite Earths. Yeah, man, that is badass. Man, the lighting on this is really wild. Whoa, look at this. This is good. Damn. His swamp thing needs a little more texture. Just a little bit. A little more mossy, swampy. He needs to go like 5% Frazetta on this, and it would look even better. You know, and, and, and the thing is, is Alex Ross, I mean, he does really kind of keep tight reins on his, his uh, level of looseness. Um, and uh, yeah, that could be part of it, where it's like, like um, they're very literal paintings. Oh man, it's so good. That's such a nicely drawn head too. <laughs> I don't know, this monkey guy always cracks me up. Nice hand. Wow, that's really crazy. I like the metal arm. That's really cool. Wow. Oh yeah, so I have this book. This is so this is JLA Liberty, but I'm thinking No, I think I think Alex did the insights on this. I was thinking it was a cover for someone else's book, but I actually think again another really, really killer upshot. Man, this Martian Manhunter is just great. Really, really powerful anatomy. I love the way that he does this. This is so good. It's just so solid. Most of you, I'm sure, because David's got way more um, subs than me, but David Finch has been doing some painting um, tutorial videos. I haven't had a chance to check them out yet, but I know Ariel Olivetti was on one of them, maybe two. Uh, but he's really, really good. You want to see someone... Uh, that, that uh, to me leans maybe a little bit more towards fantasy painting. Um, man, Olivetti is a badass. Uh, this is really, really great. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, both of these are good. Real good. Man, Superman is big. These are pretty smooth. You know? Like, he didn't go in and define a lot of planes, like, through the abs and stuff. It works. Looks really good. All right. Let's continue, friends. Ooh, what is this? Oh, man, it's so iconic. Oh, man, look at this. The sketch. Man, that was kick-ass. You can see on this, he kind of has Batman's chest lit a little bit differently. On the other one, it came in here quite a bit. You know, and then he had this more open. There probably was some value in it, but that was a little bit more like that. This is real nice. Superman profile. C kind of a profile. It's getting there. This too, that Batman's good. Ooh, yeah, I remember he had one era where he was doing a lot of pieces like this, where it was like, they were basically hiring him to just basically do like every freaking character in the DC universe. Man, I, you know, honestly, if I was Alex, I would want an increased rate for something like that. I mean, obviously the originals are going to be worth a fortune, but man, this is a lot of effort. I think there, there should be a point where after like 20 characters on a piece, you start to get like some sort of bump in salary. Because, you know, some editor going, oh, I've got the funnest thing for you to do. It's going to be 100 characters on a cover. It's like, oh, it's fun, but it also takes time. I want money. That's what I want. <laughs> oh, this is really cool. 
but I'm sure Alex has a very, very good rate anywhere he goes, so who knows? Maybe it's not necessary. But yeah, this is some tremendous amount of work. Superman's great. I love the lighting on him, too. Okay. Wow, that's really cool. He had some eras where he was doing some stuff that was a little bit darker that I liked quite a bit. Like, this is this is really nice. This type of stuff. Has a little tiny bit of a, a different character to it. It's, it. It is interesting to see, though, how Alex really kind of came out almost fully formed. I mean, I'm sure for him, he evolved and, and really grew. But, but by the time he does Kingdom Come after Marvels, to me, I mean, his style is pretty much locked into place. Man, this is so good. Oh, well, this is cool. Interesting. Oh, man, that would have been cool. So this was, there was an unpublished proposal called Portraits of Villainy. Fully, I... And it kind of it riffs off of those big books I was talking about. Oh, this would have been pretty fun to see. Yeah, that would have been interesting. This reminds me a tiny bit of uh, Adam Hughes has been doing covers for a book called Ferris. They're really nice. In fact, he's doing some covers for a few things. I'm like, I need to start collecting some of these again. I'm kind of missing not purchasing new uh, Adam Hughes covers and having them in my collection. But uh, Us is a really great penguin. Damn. Grod. Gorilla Grod. Oh, man. There's one of them. so crazy he's so freaking good look at that man that is awesome you can actually see a little bit of the canvas as far as i know it it, it looked to me like he was painting on um crescent illustration board i'm not an expert on that though but they i my memory is that they weren't like on um wood framed canvas portraits they were on, on an artboard, so don't hold me to that, but that's what I remember, is it was pretty thick, you know, maybe two, three-eighths of an inch hard board that they were on. So, m that board doesn't really have a texture texture on it, so this is nice. Man, he really crushes it with these kind of things, too. It's tough stuff to draw. This, actually, this Robin is nice, too, flying in. It's interesting where the rope is coming out on his hand. I'm like trying to picture if you were. Oh, I guess so. Yeah, it's this tricky little hand pose. And this is really nice too, actually. I like how he's got the shadow under her boobs. Works good. So if you started pulling dark up here, I mean, it could theoretically still work. Obviously, the light's coming from a different direction, but uh, to indicate that form popping out popping and robin's cape is actually really cool too this is nice yeah this is really cool i always love this kind of stuff tony daniels is is actually pretty good with capes he's drawn a lot of batman and stuff like that but uh yeah I like i like uh, how tony does uh, some of the ripples and stuff like that Ooh, this is this is cool too, man. This guy was on fire with these group shots. Again, you need reference for people flying. I mean, this is just like money in the bank, you know. Really, really for as I just I know there's so many people out there that are that are trying to learn or improve and stuff like that. And oops, I meant to rotate it. It's just giving you a lot of ideas. 
leg positions, arm positions. You know, some of the arms are up. Sometimes there's one up, one out, one going back. He's got him down, probably out, you know, coming towards us. If you, if not on this piece, on another one, you know, like where a character is actually. Um, oops, let me get another color. You know, like you can have your arms sort of. Even you could have it up more. But anyway, but yeah, he gives you a lot of ideas. And even this kind of stuff where you've got um nice turn on the hips. Kind of deal. I actually let's turn more this way, but you know. I have that nice seesaw kind of vibe. This one's good too. Oh, Alex. Beast mode. Oh, yeah, I remember this. So this is Bruce Tim pencils, and then Alex painted over it. Pretty fun look, actually. Uh, this is one of those things where I kind of wish that they would have done more of these. It would have been interesting to see a few more. They dipped their toe in the pool, but... W like, if they would have done, like, 12 covers like this... Oh, man, it would have been so kick-ass. They would have had more time to play. Oh, wow, okay. I realized it was from an inked piece. This is cool. Oh, haha. <laughs> You know, it's funny is I saw a Mad Magazine the other day. It was not too long ago. It was I think it was in the grocery store actually, and I was kind of staring at the piece. It was a digitally painted piece, and I was kind of like, uh, it looked really good, but it wasn't as fun to see it digitally painted as it would have been to see it hand painted, or watercolor or something like that. But it was really, really like man, it was just like spot on in terms of like the look and stuff. Yeah, you can kind of see like this, like a little bit of, um, uh, I guess you call it just texture, but the pattern on the artboard, you know. So there's definitely at times where there seems to be a little bit of tooth on it. You can really see it quite well. This is a nice scan of this piece. So who knows? He may mix it up a little bit. <laughs> That's pretty funny. All right. Oh, yeah. Christmas time. Christmas time. His plastic man is actually pretty cool. Uh, I guess this is Zatanna. <laughs> Those are funny glasses. He should have given him the red, uh, the red cups. <laughs> they could have been playing beer pong or something. <clears throat> oh, I get it. This is a riff of the Rockwell thing. I hadn't really looked at the whole piece. There's a real famous Rockwell um, Thanksgiving. Uh, I think it's Thanksgiving. Maybe it's Christmas. Uh, but there's a soldier standing outside of a... Um, like a feast and he's in the snow and stuff like that it's a beautiful piece it's actually one of my favorites it's funny because uh i've shared it a few times um throughout the years this is great too man this is really really good oh man his painting is just like on point here god damn look at that Really, really nice forearm and fist here. I love the drop of the um, the hand right there. It's really good. And this is nice, too. He's got his hand going back away from us. You know. That's behind us. So, chunk, chunk, chunk. 
I think the temptation for some people would be to just do a side view. Myself included right now. But seeing the big boys put stuff behind it really is helpful. And again, really nice cape ends on this. Really, really good. And a really interesting piece. It's an interesting layout. And man, I mean, Batman's almost invisible in this in some ways. But uh, he's there, right in our face. This is interesting, too. He did his pupil... I don't know what my rule book would be with Batman. If, like, once the mask is on, I'm kind of thinking that you wouldn't see his eyes. But I know that's not realistic. But, you know. Oh, yeah. Metal Man. Wow. Is this cool? Yeah, this is really nice. Oh, man, that's, a, that's really cool. Even with Travis doing the Pain and Metabarum book, I mean, he may have been looking at other artists, but but again, I mean, it's like, you've got an artist like Alex who's done these just megalithic painted stories, and, you know, he's, he's showing us the way, you know? That's what these guys do. They're sort of like leaders of this. And his metal is actually very, very cool, too. This all looks great. I like this guy quite a bit. And then this is all very, very kick-ass. Okay. Ooh, flash. It was funny. I was looking at something this morning that was very similar to this. Maybe it was in this video, and I'm, like, actually not even remembering it. I was trying to figure out what to what to do a video on. I had kind of decided something last night, and then this morning I was thinking Dune. And then I, I was like, you know, let's do Alex Ross. As we had done the painted the painted um, video, and then um, Kelsey kind of got me excited about actually looking at more Alex Ross's like I said, he seemed enthusiastic about him. This stuff is great. I'm, it's really, really interesting how he does this with these. Um, I mean, he must be taping this stuff off, you know, and then um, painting and around it and stuff like that. But, uh, yeah, doing speed lines and paint and stuff like that would be tricky. But he does a real nice job on Flash. I mean, I always think that it's pretty interesting how he handles him. Yeah, it looks real good. Hmm. Interesting. This almost looks like a toy when you see it. The white highlights on him actually makes him look like he's made of like plastic. It's kind of trippy. <laughs> he does this guy so good. His black canary is great too. Damn. She has nice, powerful thighs. <laughs> yep. Good, good, good. Oh, look at that. That is awesome. So, so okay, I'm going to start to wind this down a little bit and we'll see where we're at with time. It's 11. Yeah, I was going to go to basically like 11. So, we'll, we'll look at a few more. Plastic man. And then um, I'm posting pretty regularly on Instagram again, bumping some art out, and then um, I'll post an update on Twitter about uh, a live Super Fun Sunday this week and, and other social media too. So this is pretty cool. You can see his eyes in here. Just a little, but that's a nice touch. Man, it's real subtle. It's definitely there. I like how this is so smoky. I've got a little bit of that. Oh man, that's cool. 
He's really into putting the shadow on the crotch there. <laughs> I noticed it on one of the other pieces. It was the Hawkman. Deep shadow on the groinular area. <laughs> it's like, that's right, Rich. Yes. <laughs> that's cool. I haven't done a ton of Green Lantern stuff, but I did actually a full issue with Billy Tan that was really nice, actually. It's a shame more people don't know about it, because Billy Tan is actually an excellent penciler, and uh, we had a pretty fun story to draw. It was a lot of characters, though. You do a Green Lantern book, you better buckle up, because you're going to, generally speaking, that's stuff like this. There's a lot of Green Lantern core heroes and villains, and man, the books are just usually packed with them. This is so good, though. Again, another just really, really great ideas for flying poses and just about every dang angle you can imagine. Upshots. He's the best at this. I mean, there's so many people that probably have have refined their um, upshots using Alex Ross because uh, he, he seemed to do it a lot. I mean, honestly, I, I talked about this before, but there was a point where Jay Lee learned how to do an upshot and he used, started using it all the time, like on covers and stuff like that. But generally, it would be like a shot like this. But you know, you you could you could see that he had taken some time to like learn it, and he was using it a lot on pieces. And and uh, wouldn't surprise me if he fine tuned it using some of Alex's uh, upshots because he was really using it quite a bit at that time. This is a long time ago. I'm talking like over twenty years. Probably in the late 90s. But there's all these little things that happen in comics that actually really do actually create ripples and, and things that people use. And sometimes we, we lose sight of like the origins of, of where, the, um, where it became cool again. It's not to say that they're the first to do it, but they kind of popularize it at a moment. And then, um, you know, it just gets used for a long time and then no one really knows where it came from unless you are around at that moment. He does nice. I it's funny cuz I I have a collection of different boot styles um that I just saved over, you know, a period of a couple of years and uh it is interesting, man, how different cuts of boots will take light and um, you know, start putting straps on them and you know if there's something in between i mean it can really really start to create a lot of like interesting highlights and patterns that you can use but these guys have got the pretty iconic almost like wrestler boot shoes or the booty <laughs> the booty foot again always something interesting with the flash He's, he has some fun with that and his Martian Manhunter is always great. Ooh, look at that. Damn, that's cool. Death Stranding. <laughs> oh, I wanted that game to be so good. I know there's people out there that enjoy it, but I I really wanted it to be maybe a little leaning more towards like Metal Gear Solid. With with elements of, of what it is. These are cool. It's interesting. Um, I haven't seen as much of the um, vintage poses as I was talking about in this book. He definitely did it, though, because it was something that I always thought was really interesting with this stuff is where he would take John Buscema poses or Kirby poses and um, uh, throw them into his, like, realistic paintings, and it was really kind of cool to see them painted this. <laughs> These are so good. Oh man, the lighting on those is awesome. And then again, just really, really iconic. Yes. Whoa, what is this? Oh, I see. Oh, that's funny. Oh, and there's the upshot that I was talking about. <laughs> that's really funny. 
Oh my god, that's crazy. We were just talking about that. But yeah, like I said, um, and this is, what year were these pieces? So this is 92, 94. Like I said, I, I saw Jay Lee kind of bring it into his stuff somewhere maybe in 97, 98, is what I remember. It's not a big deal, but it was, it was funny because he fell in love with the upshot and used it a lot. Like everybody had this sort of like that going on. How funny. That's interesting. I like it. <laughs> wow, this is so funny. It's funny that we were just talking about that, and then it's like, here we go. But yeah, there's all those beautiful upshots. And now we know where it came from. That actually makes it even kind of funner. You know, like it's a fun like little addition to that uh, footnote. Well, here we go again. And you know this lighting is like just spot on. He's he's got his Superman model, you know, lit in his house. And uh, some artists, when they're learning to light stuff, uh, learn more patterns than sort of maybe the theory behind it. Meaning that uh, you know, it's like if you can learn to light it here, or move the light here, or move the light here. It'll benefit you, but some people just learn the patterns where they just go, oh, okay, like his lips are black here. You know, they, they kind of memorize the shapes and use it that way more. It's fine. I mean, it's, you know, you'll have to balance the two over time. <laughs> his plastic man is so funny. And again, really, really cool cape. You can almost feel the string holding this up. Isn't that funny? <laughs> like, like he's in his backyard and he's like all right we're gonna have the cape going like here and he's got like clothes lines or something maybe not but it's, it's funny how many i have s pretty much most of these books oh yeah that's cool man those pencils are tight excellent It's funny, it's like deceivingly simple, but this I think this would be a little tricky to pull off. Hmm. Having the faces so close together, like the first thing I would be I would start to think about um the body width, you know, like the flash is in front of this guy, like I would almost think that the heads would be smaller. Um you, you know what I mean? Because he'd be standing about a foot behind him and a foot behind him. These faces feel like they're like almost like cheek to cheek to cheek to cheek which physically with their bodies would be difficult so i would kind of probably overthink it and then it wouldn't work as well this is nice man that's so good him turning his head these are all very like this little area right here is fantastic her sort of very casual like almost kind of admiration she's got like a bit of a sense of uh, like amusement going on and he's kind of looking at her sort of almost like reacting to her amusement and then this is really really good <laughs> this is great oh man earth yep really nice really really good oh and look Ooh, this is cool. I like that. And that's a really wild up shot. Man. Oh, that's so crazy. Really interesting. I would assume, honestly, Finch might even be circling back to Ross a little bit. I'm sure he's looking at Bisley and Frazetta and stuff like that, too, but... It, if, if you're going to get into painting comics, I, I mean, I can't imagine anyone wouldn't at some point kind of at least take a little sneaky peek at, at Ross. And, you know, I mean, this is a pretty graphic piece, but you can really see when you turn it grayscale how clear his reads are. You know, he has a real nice application of color, but this is crystal clear. Even these characters back here that are almost nearly all in shadow still read so expertly. And I didn't even have to tinker with the levels at all. Um, I mean, and his just, his value control is just out of this world. Even this stuff is great. So 
Who's the man with the plan? Mr. Ross. This is good. Capes a-fluttering and a-floating. Lots of overlapping. Fun stuff. It almost looks like his pants have been pulled down by his ankles. <laughs> no, that's not funny, Rich. Take it back. Be a little, little moment there. This is nice too. I really don't know much about Shazam, to be honest. He's one of those characters that I, I just never have read the comic book. I only really know him by name. I don't even think I know the actual character's name. Like, you know, if he has a real name, I have no idea. Oh, so he was Captain Marvel, though, right? But Marvel had, there's a story behind it where it's like, I think he was Captain Marvel and Marvel had a Captain Marvel, so then DC changed it to Shazam. Something along the lines of that. But uh, he is actually very cool. In some ways, uh, I, I he's almost a little more interesting to me than Superman. It's just he was never used to the extent that I know enough about him. This is really cool. In my defense, you have to understand that I started collecting comic books and about 16 months later, I was already working professionally. And at that point, my fandom kind of went out the window in terms of like having time to really like read and look at comics. I would look at the art and try to like learn things. But um, yeah, I really wasn't, I really just never had the opportunity to um, be a fan for a long time where I could sort of soak it all in. Over time, I mean, I caught up for sure. I don't feel like I'm like a complete moron on it, but there's huge, huge gaps in my uh, knowledge base. It was interesting too is, so I think Costco had these big, huge coffee table books of DC. There was three of them. One was uh, Bronze Age, one was Copper, and one was Silver. And they're big, thick, like almost like encyclopedias that break it all down. I'm bringing those actually into my office, maybe today if I can get them. Um, cause I wanted to start looking at them a little bit more. Just I'm, because I'm world building with blaster kid. I really want to understand how the Marvel universe was created. I want to understand how the DC universe was created, how these ideas and singular, like, you know, very powerful characters, um, were orchestrated. And I know it's not flawless. This looks like Andy Griffith. <laughs> um, just a little, or, or, uh, all, maybe Ward Cleaver. He looks like a TV dad. Um, that's funny uh but but yeah so i'm i'm curious i know it's not a perfect thing you know that there was probably a point where they were just trying to get more titles and and you know power became unbalanced and then they probably tried to fine-tune it with things but uh yeah i just you know it's like i want to i want to figure out what you know what's the hierarchy in the blaster kid universe like where does blaster kid stand in terms of her level of power you know where she's at now i mean if it's a hero's journey you know she may be earlier in her sort of evolution but you know who's here who's here who's behind her who who are maybe people that are parallel with her it's all really important to know and then you know are there other factors that can come from other places you know i mean there's a lot you can start to craft around um a good idea this dude is ready for something i don't know he looks like he's ready to um go on America's Got Talent. <laughs> He's going to throw knives at his, like, kids and <laughs> amaze Simon Cowell. It's a big dude. I. It's funny, is he's really into this, like, shadow shape here. But it, it, he, I'm sure it's right. It's basically, he's doing, like, a core shadow, like what you would do on a nose. Like, if this is the nose, he's basically doing this over the crotch and then up into the the abdomen you know as this this starts to bow out but it, it's an interesting thing i'm surprised editorially sometimes they maybe weren't like oh uh, can we just keep it simple there <laughs> oh this is cool i love these kind of robots the kind of old vintage pulp 
they're real simple. They're really like very strong shapes. I find them very creepy and almost um, very detached. You know, there's a character characterization that you get with something like this that's almost it just feels very unsympathetic and very like man you're not going to be able to like rationalize with this you know it's real advanced technology you would assume there's a higher level of intelligence this looks very base level where it's like it's just here to destroy shit and whatever whatever its mission is it's going to take care of it and then uh these are cool cartoons Man, those are really nice. He could do a great short story like this. I mean, this is as good as any cartooning that I, I see in other books. It's really, really good. Shazam gets no love. He was going to have a cartoon. The powers that be said, why don't we just make it Superman or Batman? Shazam. I've noticed that a lot of his sketches are on pretty crinkly paper, so he's not doesn't seem to be super super precious with um, this stuff. I mean, and it's you know possible that he just has so much of it that some of it gets damaged. But this is cool. This looks like the wizard from Led Zeppelin. Um, song remains the same. Jimmy Page when he ages and then takes you into the dazed and confused solo. <laughs> this is really cute. Really good. This is cool. Would be interesting to see him paint um, uh, a Giger type painting, <laughs> like Alex Ross take take and do like an alien, you know, something creepy and dark sci-fi. I think he's got it in him. I've always felt like like he's got the there's the he seems to handle high contrast quite well, so. Oh man, that's a great shot. Damn. Jeez Louise. That's crazy. Oh man. This was a good one. I'm actually really happy that we did this. This is pretty interesting to me. And boy, he can draw, he can paint, he does great clothes, poses, lighting. Check, 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 check. He's checking all the boxes. This is nice. Spirit of Truth. Oh, Twin Towers for him. Okay. Damn, his layouts are really good. Okay. This is nice too. Damn. See, and this is where one of those things where it starts to fall a little short for me where people go, well, he references stuff. I mean, if, if he's referencing stuff, I mean, you know, use reference and try to pull off something like this. I mean, it's just, he's doing it at such a high level and he's able to orchestrate all these different ideas into like individual pieces. I mean, it's pretty impressive. This, this little extra shot of her is really, really cool. But, you know, dude is doing some hard work and this is... I mean, this looks like a John Paul Leone or Tommy Lee Edwards sketch. This could, you know, I mean, a piece like this, you could hand this to, like, a really good, like, brush inker or something like that. They'd kill it. it would be a very different style. It would You know, you wouldn't even probably recognize Alex Ross, but it could definitely work. Wonder Woman. These are pretty cool with the, like, singular color. When he does those really like crazy flashbacks. This guy's pretty creepy. And this is nice. Damn. Looks like a Gene Colan drawing. Okay. And we got this. So, all right, I'm going to wrap it up. We went over the time, but hopefully that was enjoyable and something interesting. Um, you know, I consider this a little bit different. I was really, really trying to come up. I wanted to do Sid Mead, but it wasn't that easy to come up with a collection of images that I was 100% sure were all Sid Mead. Also, the size of the images were all a mixed bag. And so I was struggling to come up with um, 
a good one. Somewhere I have a couple of Sid Mead books. I haven't seen them in years, though, so I'm assuming they're in a tub. But uh, I have uh, some of the portfolios that are uh, like almost like 11 by 17. There's like a blue one, a green one, and something like that. I'm nearly sure I had those. So, but I haven't seen them forever. So, all right. You guys have a great day. Hopefully, everyone has a super fun Sunday. We'll look at a few more images as we sort of wrap this up. And, uh, yeah, have a great day. And uh, hope you're drawing and having fun. And uh, follow me on social media, and you can find out about uh, when we're going to go live this week. Hopefully, it happens. Um, so, all right. I'll talk to you guys later. Have a great day. We're going to go full screen like this for a second. so many ways to draw gotham what's yours whoa that's cool <laughs>